Hi, everybody. Welcome to Word on Wednesday. So happy you've joined me today. I see Shelly's on. Hello, Shelly. From Chile, Michigan. It must be getting cold in Michigan. Starting to get a little bit chilly here, too. I concur with you, my friend. Okay, so we're going to wait for a few people to jump on here. Super excited about that. And um, we have a super special guest to come on today. Excited to have him. So he'll be, he'll be coming on here in just a second. Hey, I thought about trying this. You're going to have to help me, you guys. I'm going to see if I can share my screen and do a really short worship clip. Would you guys be okay with that? I don't think we've ever done that in the four, yes, four years, maybe five years we've been doing her, um, doing Word on Wednesday. I don't think we've done this before. So let me try this. This is my, this is my daughter, Hannah. Um, this is her latest recording that was released on the Oceans album. This is the church that she's a part of and goes to their Bible school in Southern California. Let me try this. Let's just see if it'll work. And it's a long song, so we won't do the whole thing. We won't go through the whole thing. But I just thought it'd be kind of cool for us to worship together for just a few minutes. I'll just go more towards the end of the song. Let me see if we can do this. You guys are going to have to let me know, though, if you if it comes through okay. I don't know if it'll come through the right way. So y'all will have to help me on this one. Let's see. Okay, so let's try this. What do you guys see there? Is that popping up right? Hmm. Wow, it's just like my screen forever. That's interesting. Let me try this. Let me see. Shelly says, we listen to this song on repeat. We all love it. Praise the Lord. Okay, so Sherry Petzl, she's saying it looks like it. Okay, so when I go here, do you guys see this? I'm going to push play. Let's see what happens. Okay, well, it was a good attempt. You guys cannot hear the sound, huh? All right. Hey, Pastor Clyde's in the in the back wings waiting. I can see his precious, precious face back there. Pastor Clyde, I'm experimenting. I'm seeing if we could get this on here, but you can't hear the sound. That is that's interesting. Okay. Well, I'll have to mess around with this, but you guys go to um Go to YouTube, type in Worthy of It All, Oceans Church, Worthy of It All, and you'll see my Hannah girl worshiping her cute little face off. And it's really good. When you get to about six minutes in, I just want to run around the room and just be crazy for Jesus. It's awesome. Okay, let's bring in Clyde Lewis. I'm so happy to have you here on Clyde. Hey, hey how are you? Yeah. Doing well. So this is. My, I have normally. I, I, I this is um, normally I have a haircut, and you know I was in D.C. this time around, so I, I look terrible. <laughs> I look terrible. I look terrible. Normally I like to have a haircut. You know like a, I whew, disagree. Right now. I disagree. So, <laughs> okay, hold on a second. Your hair looks pretty short right now. You like? I get it. a haircut once a week. Once a week I get a haircut. Every week, once a week. Yes, for years. Every week I get a haircut. Like looking like this, when I see my guy on uh, Friday, he's going to like, man, what happened? Every week. <laughs> every time I go out of town, I get a haircut. 
And it's funny because Pastor Jenna, she knows, like, I can't even sneak up to Tri-Cities because she's like, oh, you get a haircut, you're on your way up. Like, I got to get a haircut. Like, this okay. is like not okay for me. We so. love it. So what you have there is your green screen. And what we're getting is the, the Pastor Clyde in his chilled lifestyle. Yes. We're like, yes, yes. We're all yeah. coming in here just like, you know, friends. You know, the first time you did that green screen, I was like, did Clyde move? Like, did he move? Like, where did he move? <laughs> it looks so real. I love it. No, it's a, I, you know, I move. It's just a hey, one place. time, everybody, this is funny. I actually on Zoom, you know, we've, I've done so many Zooms. Like, wow. Anyway, I got, I, I came on Zoom and I was stuck in outer space. The, the green screen was in outer space and I was just floating in outer space. And I was like, what is happening? Cause I never used the green screens, but um, somebody had to help me get off that because wow. I was in outer space. And the Lord said, yeah, um, that's, that's pretty much where I'm sending you with these million women is right into outer space. So kind of feeling so like that. Of which, Okay. So we're going to um, just have you prophesy as the Lord leads corporately, individually, but let me just share a couple of things, everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, this, this movement to Washington, DC is on its way. It is well on its way and it is like a rocket ship into outer space. So 1 million women and their families. Okay. So for Jenny, that's seven of us, all seven of us, my kids know we're going to Washington, DC. We're also going to be standing in our capital. So let's talk about this. The capitals, we want women and their families to pray fast and stand with us at your capital, April 13th, 2024. If you know somebody that's like, Hey, I think I'm going to get married on April 13th. You're unless you're getting married at the capitals, you're not getting married that day. That's right. That's Cancel right. all weddings. Cancel. All no one's dying. There's no funerals. There's no surgeries. There's no family reunions. Sorry. Right. There's no church barbecues. That's we right. want everybody to shut down what you thought you were going to be doing that day, big X, and say, mm -hmm. I'm going to my capital. I'm going to my state capital. In fact, um, I had Christian Rosas yesterday. You know Christian Clyde. Yeah. He was yeah. on a podcast with us yesterday because we're launching a Don't Mess With Our Kids podcast that will come out October 12th. All right, everybody. So you're going to want to send that far and wide and subscribe to it. But we had him on yesterday and he said that they set these times up for the nation to meet in the streets and people all agreed no one's working that day. I mean, businesses shut down. It was just this unanimous agreement that no one's working. Businesses are shut down and we are standing in the streets because we don't want to lose our country. So that's how serious we are about April 13th. That is uh, that is according to. Esther 413, because Esther 413, it's my favorite, Pastor Clyde. Mm, All yes. right. It's when Mordecai has his response to Esther's excuse. Now, listen, when God first told me a million, I thought, OK, well, I'll just be over here living my life. <laughs> just try not to look at that prophetic word, you know. Don't make eye contact with your prophetic word, right? That's how I felt. And then people started prophesying it and I was trying to dodge it. And, you know, anyway, here we are. But Esther, she took the word from Mordecai. Mordecai said, hey, listen, Esther, here's the deal. There's already a decree been sent out. The Jews are going, they're going down. The king has already put a signet ring on it. It's over. And the Jews are all going to be destroyed, except for you're a Jew. You're in the palace. And what if... God wants you to, you need to go talk to the king. Well, she says, essentially, she says back, Mordecai, that's such an awesome idea, except for, I can't, because right. it's illegal. Yeah. It's against the law. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Mm. It's against the law. Hmm. Interesting. And so she's thinking, you know what? These poor Jews are all going to die. And I'm just going to be here in the palace, just ruling over a kingdom that won't include Jews, I guess. No, Esther got a response from Mordecai in 413. And what Mordecai said to her was, hey, Esther, here's the deal. You're already dead. Right. Basically, don't think, he said, don't think just because you're in your palace 
that you are going to escape the destruction of the Jews because Esther, you are a Jew. The decree is against you too. The palace isn't going to save you. And I think Pastor Clyde right now, and, and yes, please, 413, April 13th, get it on the calendar, get to your state capitol. And then in the fall of 2024, God willing, we're going to get this permit through and we're going to get to Washington, D.C. But we know on 413, it might be 10 of you standing in your capital. Great. The word of God says we're two or more gather. There is in the midst of them and whatever we agree upon, he will do. So you only need two or more in every capital. Go, go, go to your capital. That's right. However, That's right. I think, Pastor Clyde, I'm just going to prophetically say this here because today is a prophetic day corporately and individually. But I believe that the church right now, that we are not yet in the 414 revelation yet. I don't think we've sunk our spirit into 414. 414 is kind of the final, okay, this is going to happen. And if we don't do it, we're in trouble. But you back up, 413 is Esther, your palace does, isn't going to save you. And I'm wondering, Pastor Clyde, how many of us have a palace that we think is going to stay standing if America goes down? Yeah, like yeah. as if my her voice fortress is just going to stay standing while America goes under siege. The kids go under attack and somehow my her voice movement ministry is just going to just do its own thing and just be awesome, you know, or our business or our churches. We saw what happened. Our churches got shut down. We couldn't even meet. We bought a retreat center to be able to bring people together to equip them in our ministry. Our ministry went on pause. What in the world? Yeah. So we have to understand that a, pal a palace, our Instagram following, our business, all these wonderful blessings that God has given us, those are blessings and those are assignments, but they have no ability to stand in the day of destruction. That's right. Because our That's nation right. right now, I believe what Lou Engle said. I believe it with my whole heart. I believe he heard from the Lord when God told him, this is the last stand for America. Okay. And if it's truly the last stand, will you stand? That's right. Or are you going to sit? Right. Are you going to get benched at this time? Because you know what? Everybody has a choice. And I want to come against any idea that Christians have to think, well, you know, probably somebody with a really big following is going to come along. And, you know, I've seen Sean Bowles. I mean, he's He's so awesome. He's just going to like take us to the finish line. Hey, what about the Beveers? I mean, they're awesome. They're just going to take us to the finish line. I believe that God is saying, whether you have a platform or not, you're being called upon. Whether You know what? And, and here's the thing. There's a ton of people that don't have a platform except for the most important one, which is the one in their own home, which is their children and their grandchildren. That's the platform that God wants us to steward in this time right now. So you might say, well, Jenny, I don't know if I'm just called to this fight. Well, let me tell you what the fight is. The fight is to start a prayer hub. Mm -hmm. That's you fighting. Mm -hmm. Start a prayer hub. And if somebody says to me, I'm a Christian, but I don't want to start a prayer hub. Okay. Let's just have a little discussion here. Why would you not want to pray it together? Because that's biblical. Okay. So this isn't Jenny's idea. This isn't her voice's idea. This is God's mandate is that we get together and we pray. All right. Square number one. Number two is show up to the Capitol 413. And we're going to be doing something I'll share at the end of this broadcast. I want everybody to stick around. I'm going to share something that we're going to be launching within the next couple of days. It's going to be huge. You got to be a part of it. Okay. I'm going to share that. I haven't announced it publicly yet. Okay. But in the fall of 2024, that's where we're going to be, Washington, D.C., on that lawn. Let me show you what I what I have on my desk. Let me just reach for this, okay? <coughs> this right here, okay? This is, can everybody see it? Okay, I got to get it straight here. Let me see if I can yes. get it straight. All right, there it is. That is 1.4 million men. That's 1.4 million people. You see all those people all the way down here. All the way here, all those people. I tell my kids, I said, you know, when mom's on Zooms and mom's doing lives and these kind of things, I said, what we're doing is we're getting ready to do this again, but it's going to be women and their families. And my little Mercy, she goes, I'm a woman. That's and right. I said, yes, you are. She's seven. And she says, well, I'm a woman. And I said, yep, you're going to be here with me too, Mercy. They want to be a part of it. Our families want to be a part of it. But I put this in front of me, Pastor Clyde. Because the word is so big, 
It is so crazy. It is so audacious. And you know what? Some people today, you might get a word today and you might need to put it in a frame and put it in front of you. You know, I have this. My husband actually put it in a frame. He set it right in front of my desk. It sits right here. So every zoom on, on everything I see, I say, yes, Lord. Yes, God. You are the God of the impossible. You've done it before. You're going to do it again. Because you know what? There are times, everybody, that I literally say, what in the world have I got myself into? This is crazy. Can I back out? Is there an exit door? Is there a back door? I could just maybe disappear. This is nuts. And then the Lord comes and says, honey, you're not going to do it. I'm going to do it. I just need you to work alongside me, get into action, pray, but I'm going to breathe on this and this is going to be a miracle. And I get set back up again. Right. So I want to tee you up right now because some of you are going to get some words from Pastor Clyde and you might be tempted to be like, I'm so excited to be on Word on Wednesday. I might get a word today. And then you get a word and you're like, <gasps> you know, like, oh my gosh, maybe not that big of a word. I don't know if God's that big. Right. So God is big. He's big in us and he has the ability to work through us if we have faith. Now I'm going to say one more thing, Clyde, and then I'm going to release you to prophesy all you want <laughs> until you feel the faucet's turned off and then we'll tell everybody goodbye. I'll make my announcement and then we'll be on with the rest of our day. This is what I want to share. I had Rabbi Jason Sobel, I think that's how I say his last name. He was on our podcast yesterday and he was mind blown. Cannot wait for you guys to see this episode. Podcast coming out October 12th. So he shares John 21 when they had fished all night, caught nada. Ever feel like that? Because you might get a word today that's like, oh, that's so special. What a special word, but I've already tried that. I've already been in business and the trap door, whoop, and I, and now he's telling me to do business. Wow, that's so interesting. I've been fishing all night, have caught nothing, but God, you're hilarious. These people have been fishing all night long. And this is what Rabbi Jason said. You'll have to watch the episode. I'm not doing it justice. Okay. When it comes out here in a couple of weeks, but this is what he said that the word fish in Hebrew is also related to the word worry, fear, and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And he said, when we fish off the left side of the boat, left in Hebrew is attached to fear and judgment. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say that we're trying to evangelize. So we get our sign that says, hey, you're going to hell. You might want to find Jesus. That is fear and judgment, right? That is a fear and judgment. That's why those people stand on the street corner and don't have a crowd with them. They're catching nothing. They're catching nothing because fear and judgment is fishing on the wrong side of the boat. Now, on the right side of the boat, when Jesus said, throw your nets out again on the right side of the boat, the right side is love, unity, love and unity. And this is what Rabbi Jason said. He said that the, the revival that's coming, the harvest of souls has to have a larger container because here's the situation. We all might have our individual containers, you know. Pastor Clyde has Lewis Ministries. I have her voice. But I want you to imagine it this way. Her voice is basically like those little kitty um, nets that you catch minnows with. Right? Little, mm -hmm. like that's her voice. Lewis Ministries. Right? But the net that God wants to capture a billion soul harvest will be a net. It will be a large net and you know what it will be? It will be organizations coming together in strength because the strength of the net comes down to how strong its knots are, its interactions. So Pastor Clyde and I were just in Washington, D.C. The morning I woke up, I was in alpha state, you know, when you're like awake asleep, whatever. Here came this, this phrase and it hit my spirit. I've never heard it and I've never said it. The phrase was this. The strength of your organization is determined by the strength of its interactions. That's right. So and I saw almost like a, like an old war canvas tent, right? Not like a tent, like we go camping in, but like a canvas tent. And here's the door where you slip in and out. Okay. 
I saw the interactions between people. Think of you and your family members. Think of you and your spouse. Think of you and your children. Think of your ministry and the ministry down the street. Think of your church and the church down the street. Okay. The interactions, what I saw in this dream were, were like, like the, the flaps of the tent of the canvas tent and the interactions, the strength, the integrity of the interactions was like cinching up the door of a canvas tent. You would never go in, sleep in a tent and leave the door wide open. All sorts of critters get in. And the Lord told me this, Jenny, the strength of an, in, of an organization is determined. And when I say organization, I put in family, the strength of a family, the strength of a business, the strength of the net for the great harvest is determined by the strength of its interactions. And I saw cinch, 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 meaning when we interact with people, we don't want to be loose in our interactions. We want to be like loose with our lips. We don't want to be like, oh, thank you so much and blah, blah, blah. And then turn around and be like, I can't believe they did that. Instead of coming straight to them and saying, hey, this is what I was thinking about this. I heard you're doing this. How can we work together on this? Instead of these loosey goose interactions where maybe we're not being integrous with each other or we're not telling the truth. Or how about my husband walks through the door. I haven't seen him for eight hours and I'm just doing my thing and he's walking by and I'm like, hey, did you go grocery shopping? Instead of like, hi, honey, how was your day? Like the strength of our interactions right. will determine the strength of the organization. And so I want you to think about this week. How can you strengthen? How can you tighten up your interactions? And how can we come together? Because you know what? Her voice movement isn't going to catch a million women. Right. Lewis Ministries isn't going to catch a million women. Lou Ingalls Ministries alone isn't going to catch a million women. It's not going to be some superstar organization that catches a million women. And we're just going to clap and applaud how great they are. Every person has a piece of this net. Every single one of you have a piece of this net. Some of us have just been threaded into a part of an organization that will then attach itself to another organization that involves a bunch of little threads and people. We are the net. Right. So be strong in your interactions, be integrous, be loving and kind. The right side is also in Hebrews faith. So we are going to move in faith. When you get your prophetic word, don't cast your net on the left side of the boat and go into fear and anxiety and worry. Cause that, you know, pastor cloud will be the first one to tell you that's your false identity, but we go into love. God, you love me so much. God, I lack nothing. You are going to provide me with everything I need to see this word come to fruition. So that is my preparation for you that are going to hear this word. And when you hear a corporate word, that's on you to take it. You know what I'm saying? Like if he gives a corporate word, guess who's, guess who he's giving the word to Everybody. you, every single person. Now here's the other thing. If he gives a word to Molly, Molly's my avatar lately, my avatar word I'm using. Molly gets a word. Your spirit leaps. You're not Molly. You're Sally. Okay. Your spirit leaps and you're like, oh, but I don't want to take Molly's word. Listen, God isn't a portion to control God. Sometimes he will use, he'll put his finger on somebody in order to open up a prophetic word that's meant for a lot of people. And so if your spirit leaps, eat it, take it. It's yours. Run with it. All right. So Father God, we just thank you for today. We thank you, God, that the word of the Lord is going to come forth today. We thank you for Pastor Clyde. We thank you how you made him. We thank you that he made him uniquely. And the way that he delivers this word today is exactly how you made him to deliver the words that are in your heart and your mind, God, for these people. I ask you, God, that we'd be receptive, that we'd open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, that we would be so receptive to you, God, and that we would not shrink back. We would not shrink back from the greatness that you have. You have greatness for us, God. You're not a small God. You're a big God. So Lord, we're not going to shrink back. We're not going to, we're not going to put you in a box. We're not only going to believe the things that we can pull off ourselves because that requires zero faith. No one here is going to get a prophetic word that you're going to get hungry in three hours. Okay. That requires no faith. That's just a fact. 
But today you're going to get a prophetic word that requires you not to lean into the word, not to lean into Clyde, not to lean into me, not to lean into her voice, but to lean into God. It causes us to lean into God. You know, desperate you get when you get a big word. It's like, oh, God, you know, because nobody can pull it off except for God himself and your yes. So in Jesus name, we thank you for it. We love you for it. Amen. All right, Pastor Clyde, take it away. I am here with you. If you need yeah. me to jump in, I will. Otherwise, I just want you yeah. to go for it. You know, I, I'm, I'm so, I'm, I was just praying. Um, and uh, th- I, it's funny because I actually see, <laughs> it's been so busy, um, you know, uh, getting a prayer, prayer for City Awakening and stuff. And so I jumped on Instagram and I seen this, you know, these, you guys, you know, Instagram is so funny because I seen the little, little, trigger that says, oh, you're going to be on Word on Wednesday. I'm like, oh, really? This is great. This is awesome. So I'm, I'm glad I looked at it last night. But it's it's amazing. I heard you were saying to me, and my prophetic antennas are just going off. Um, and, and I'm going to say this. This is I'm going to prophesy this to everyone right now. And I want you to really grab hold of this. You've got to grab hold of this. Number one is, is that every prophetic word matches the capacity that God sees you in. Every prophetic word matches the capacity that God sees you in. So when you get a prophetic word, like Jenny's got a prophetic word, we prophesied to her many years about doing certain things, um, the million. Here's what I will tell you. God says, daughter, you can do this, but you're not doing it by yourself. You and I are doing it together. So he matches that based on her capacity. And then all of a sudden, her identity energizes the prophetic word. And then all of a sudden, people start coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And their prophetic words to match the bigger goal. Grab hold of that. Watch what I'm saying. So I want you to get this um, because she was saying it. And I'm going to prophesy to some individuals. God is inviting us into a fearless to live fearless every day because I, I, we were in Washington, D.C. and I kept hearing the Lord say, this is only going to happen if my people are fearless. This is only going to happen if my people are fearless. So let me, I'm, I'm prophesying this right now that God is inviting us into a, to be fearless every day and we must know at the deepest level and we must get rid of the lies That's within us. Now, this is what the Lord began to download to me. We must get rid of that, okay? Now, now part of that is, is that the reason people, hear hear what I'm saying, because you can see the atmosphere in Washington, D.C. You can see the atmosphere in ministries. You can see the atmosphere in the prophetic, okay? The reason people are in conflict is because they are afraid, they are afraid. This is overwhelming. A million and families. Oh my God, this is so overwhelming. I don't know how this is going to happen. Conflict, 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 conflict. We don't serve a God of conflict. We serve a God who says, I made you to be fearless. <laughs> fearless. Okay, so be fearless. So watch this. This is so good. Okay, get this. I'm, get this in your spirit because I'm telling you what we've seen in Washington, D.C., I literally said, I've been going there. This is my fourth time going. I literally, I can see it. I'm like, even as I'm looking and even as I'm prophesying, even I'm talking to you right now, I can literally see a sea of families. I can literally, I mean, I literally see it. I can hear the voices. I can hear the wailing. I can hear the weeping. I can hear the worship. I can hear all of it. I can hear it. And here it is, all conflict, right? Watch this, all conflict is sourced in fear everywhere. All conflict is sourced in fear everywhere. Every domestic dispute, every argument is sourced in fear. She just talked to you. She gave you good prepping. You cannot take this thing on in fear. We need everyone all, everyone on, on top of this. Our ministry, everyone, we are in this thing. We, we're, we're deep in this thing. Come on, somebody. Like, we're so deep in this. And this is not just to say, we went to Washington, we got a million. No, no, no. There is a massive movement that is coming, and it's called revival. Revival starts within your home. 
within your home so that way you can step into Washington, D.C., fearless. And when you are fearless, you're grabbing other families to come. You're grabbing other people to come. I'm telling you, God is doing it. Then he said this to me this morning. He says, he said this to me. He says, Clyde, your job, son, is to take away the fear that people are in so they can walk into the movement that I have set before them. Wow. You understand that? I've been in Genesis. I've been going back to Genesis. And he said this. I love this. He said this. Write this down. Write this down. He said this prophetic. I'm seeing this right now. He said, Claude, I want you to think about this. He says, son, when, when, when the fall, the separation, let me just paint this. In scripture, you see the fall. There's no such thing as a fall in Adam and Eve. It's the separation in the garden. So here it is. He says, where in life do you feel vulnerable and ashamed? So we can get all that out so that we can march ahead. Because I'm telling you prophetically right now, I literally see homes, your neighborhoods, you moving from fearless, being fearful to fearless. God is inviting us every day to be fearless. He comes to us every day and says, what can I do for you today? And I literally see homes. I see neighborhoods. I'm literally so sometimes I wish people can see what I'm seeing in the spirit realm. I'm literally seeing doors been knocked on. And saying, come, follow, come, come. And God's going to give you the words to begin to draw people to come to Washington, D.C., not because of a ministry name, not because of what's happening, but to stand for America. And he's raising up his people, his ecclesia, to emerge in this hour to say, I, my, my name must be painted and shed abroad throughout America. And I'm telling you, God is raising up you in this moment. And he's saying, I need you to not walk in fear. You don't have time to listen to doctor, no issues. You don't have time to listen to the next, uh, uh, um, uh, this, well, what's my gifting and all that. He needs you right now in this moment, to listen to the voice of the Lord. Here's what I'm telling you. The I'm studying this out right now to have a keen ear to the voice of God. Matthew eleven fifteen 15 says that the ears to have ears to hear, ears to hear. And I hear the Lord say he's given the church right now, the ecclesia, ears to hear, a keen ear to hear. What does that mean? That means that you're going to have an intentive ear and you're not going to be distracted by the voices out in the world. We're on a massive assignment. When I, I left Sunday morning and the Lord says, son, the massive assignment upon Washington, D.C. is greater than you ever know it. But he says, I've got a people who's getting ready to bring revival to the world. I can guarantee you, I'm prophesying this right now. America will see the greatest revival that it's ever seen in history. And it's going to be done by us. It's going to be done by people. It's going to be done by us moving ahead. I'm I, I know her very well. We're not trying to put a name to this. We're just trying to see transformation take place in the world. So that your children, my children, can say, man, we had our parents stood in the gap so that we can have freedom. The word freedom. Freedom is motivated by love. To be free is to be motivated by love. So I prophesy right now to every person on here right now that you begin to step into the freedom and that you say, God, if I don't have motivated love, bring it to me. And I'm seeing a shifting taking place in your mindset. A shifting taking place in your mindset that is so greater. Patricia Brown, I see you, Patricia Brown. I hear the Lord say, get prepared because I'm getting ready to use you in a mighty way, says the Lord. The Lord says, you've been in a season of like a drought season. But I hear the Lord say, Patricia, you're coming out of the drought season. The Lord says, I'm getting ready to water your garden. 
I'm seeing the garden. I'm seeing as your spiritual garden. I'm literally seeing a garden. He's watering the garden. And the Lord says, do not allow the enemy to squat anymore in your garden. And he says, I want you to know that I'm turning this very thing around in this new season that you're stepping into. And I hear the Lord say that you are stepping in such a massive harvest that where there has been literally setbacks, you're, it's like God's getting ready to restore everything back to you. I'm telling you, you, you have literally, do not give up into this, in this season. Do not give up. God is about to bring you through in this next season. I'm seeing, I'm literally hearing the Lord say, it's your season. It's your season. It's your season. It's, it's a season where it's the weighty presence of God that's on your life. The other thing I hear the Lord say, he says, daughter, I want you to spend the next 60 days asking me to give you the wisdom for, for, for what's ahead in 2024. See, the Bible says that you lack wisdom. If you lack wisdom, ask and he will give it to you. And I'm seeing that, Patricia Brown, I see that God's about to give you massive wisdom. I mean, wisdom beyond your wildest dreams. I'm telling you, wisdom to forge ahead. Wisdom to set things apart. I, that's what I hear the Lord say. I'm literally seeing it. Um, so, Lord, we loose this word on Patricia Brown. I thank you for what you're doing. I, I loose this right now in Jesus' name. Um, 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 I, I think she was on here. Falake, uh, we were together, but I, I, I didn't. And, you know, many times, I mean, I can prophesy just in the moment. And, and Jenny always throws me in the place in the fire at times. <laughs> uh, and but I didn't I, I'm just seeing this. Right. I think I see you on here. But I heard the Lord say the moment your name popped up here, the Lord says she is my mighty general. And I heard the Lord say, Falake, you are stepping into a general position right now. And, and I'm telling you what I'm seeing, I'm literally seeing, I'm seeing three bowls, like, like eating bowls, like bowls. And each bowl was labeled. One was family, community, and nation. Family, community, and nation. And I'm literally seeing the bowls. And the Lord says, the bowls are representing the prayer bowls. Like when you're in a session, like I'm literally seeing, you're praying for family. You're praying for a community and you're praying for nations. And I heard the Lord say to, to, to you, daughter, he says, daughter, you're stepping into this general position of intercession like never before. And you're stepping into a place where you're going to begin to well. There's a welling. There's a welling that's going to overcome you. And along with the welling that's going to overcome you, there's going to be some, some, some key prophetic words that the Lord is going to download to you. And he's saying, but I don't want you to release it out. It's, you're going to release it out in my timing, my timing. And he says, I want to teach you in this next season when to release things out in timing. Some things are going to be so weighty in this next season. Some things are going to be so weighty that you're going to be like, Lord, I don't know. And the Lord says, it's, he says, I'll tell you when to release it out, Falake. And I'm telling you, it's going to be so with, um, with clarity. It's going to be what so, and the people that are going to, recipients that you're going to release it to, it's going to be so weighty that it's going to shift everything. Um, you're not just an atmosphere shifter, but you are a nation shifter. That's what I heard the Lord say. You are a nation shifter. And I'm telling you, it's a nation shifting. Uh, and you're going to, I'm, I'm literally seeing, as a matter of fact, the Lord says he's going to start doing that even now. Like I'm literally seeing this, like now things are going to happen. The, you're going to feel a journal. What took you months and months to fill a journal, the Lord says, you're going to fill a journal in half the year. It's going to quick. I'm telling you, it's going to be weighty words. And he says, daughter, but you must pay attention to my instruction. Do not give the words out until I say, give it out because it's about timing. It's about the keen ears to hear. That's what I hear the Lord say. You, you're stepping into that. Okay. 
Mm. I don't know even Falaka, your mom, she's supposed to be a part of this movement. I just see it. I literally see mom shifting. I see your family supposed to be in the part of this. I'm, I'm literally seeing it. I, the word I hear, thank you, Holy Spirit, is so good. Like I hear the word shake up for your family. I hear the Lord say shake up. I'm shaking it up right now, says the Lord. So Lord, I loose this word upon um, you. The Lord says, thank you. He says, you just graduated from a atmosphere shifter to a nation shifter. <laughs> yeah, whoever, you better grab hold of that. You better grab hold of that. Yeah, Mama, my Mama Jenny, she's a nation shifter. She's she's great past the sh- atmosphere shifter. She's a nation shifter. And I'm telling you, Falaki, you're a nation shifter. I, I prophesy that into your spirit right now. You're a nation shifter. Right now, feel it right there. I feel, I, see, I, I, I feel, I, I literally see it in my gut. It's like it's hitting you right there in your gut. You hit, you're feeling it right now. You're feeling it right now. You're feeling it right now. There, there's a surge. There's electricity going inside of you right now. I, I just lift your hands. Come on, for like a seat, receive it. You're actually feeling the um, overwhelmingness of it right now. It's right now. Yes, there's going to be a weeping that's about to take place. There's going to be, you're in your, I, I sense you're like in this, Maybe in your kitchen or your living room, I literally see this like it's like a, a it's like someone that hits you in the gut, and it's gonna hit you right there. I'm seeing it right now. Who have so Lord, we loose this word. We loose this word right now in the name of Jesus upon her right now. Uh, Vicky Young, I hear the Lord say, Vicky Young. I'm just throwing it. Whoever just pops up, I'm just throwing. It. I can go all day. So you just tell me when to stop, Mama. Uh, um, I, Vicky Young, I heard the Lord say, um, I'm placing your feet on sure footing. He says, the crooked paths I'm about to make straight for you. And he says, just know two things I hear, Vicky Young. I hear the Lord say, do not uh, be troubled uh, in this where you're at right now. Know that I'm with you in this season and you're not by yourself. And he says, I'm making the crooked path straight for you. And the rough edge is smooth. And he says, um, it's like he's giving you new eyes to see and a spirit to catch what's about to take place in this next season that you are stepping into, says the Lord. The Lord says, you've been in this, it's like you've been in this place where you're just trying to, to catch your breath. But I heard the Lord say, um, it's the enemy that has been distracting. Don't be distracted. Be uh, be 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 alert. The word I hear, vigilant for you in this season. Be very vigilant uh, in this season. And I'm just seeing that there's a shaking, a rumbling that's taking place within you uh, in this next season that you're stepping into. Oh, I hear the Lord say, Lord, he says, daughter, he says, it, it's, it, he says, you're on the intel of this, this, um, this drought season. You're on the intel of this journey that you've been in. And, and, and you're coming out on the other side. You're coming out on the other side. So, Lord, I loose this word upon her, and I thank you for it in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Um, let me tell you, many times people get prophetic words, and they put it on the shelf. And the reason why people do this is because they don't believe that they're good enough or they, that God can do something so great. And then we move by fear. I'm telling you, you cannot let fear stop you from stepping into your prophetic word. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, and uh, and I can tell you, I've been prophet. I, 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 I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands. I'm probably up to 200 something, 50,000 people I've been prophesied over the years. Here's what I'm telling you. I see it all the time. People get great prophetic words and they don't do anything with it. You have to learn to steward that prophetic word so that you can step ahead. You know, this is so funny because Jenny would not be doing what she's doing if she didn't put her faith into action to step out to do the ministry that God's called her to do. I've been prophesying her for years. And everybody, watch this, watch this, get this. Everyone wants somebody else's anointing, but you got your own anointing and you got to step into your own anointing. 
<laughs> yeah, you got to step into your own anointing. So I'm telling you, walk, watch what I'm about to watch what God's about to do. Yes, 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 right there. Uh, um, uh, Emmy, Emmy, uh, yes, Emmy, there he is. Man, I haven't called you. That's one of my spiritual daughters. I'm Emmy. I was thinking about you. I'm glad you're on here. I mean, I heard the Lord say, man, it's been a rocky season. I, I'm literally seeing it. I, I know that you, we prophesied about you having a baby. You, you, the baby has come, um, but it's been a rocky season. It's been a season. I mean, I mean it has been literally a rocky season uh, uh, and just all that you're walking through. The Lord says, I'm shutting the door of this rocky season. Uh, and I'm opening a new door. It's the year of 5784, a new door. The Lord says, you're going to, he's thrusting you into this new door. I'm literally seeing the door, the new door. And I'm literally seeing, it's a beautiful door. It's it, it's literally got you and your family's name on the door. And the Lord says, this is the door that I picked out for you. Walk through it. And I hear the Lord say, you're walking through this new door in me. And, and I'm telling you, it's like you have literally been overwhelmed. It's like you've been succumbed to this rockiness. But I heard the Lord say today is a day that the door is shutting and you're stepping into the door that is assigned to you and your family's about to step into this new door. And it's a door that you're overcoming. It's the door of moving forward. It's the door of pressing in. It's the door of healing. It's the door of deliverance. It's the door of peace. It's the door of really seeing what I'm doing. The Lord says, I'm causing you to walk through this door. And he says, daughter, we're not even done. And he says, you're stepping into the ministry that I put before you. He said, I've called you to the mountain of the marketplace. And he says, daughter, get prepared because I'm about to give you a keen ear to hear in this new season, says the Lord. And he says, I had to shut the door and I'm shutting that door for you permanently. There's a padlock on it. You will not go backwards to that old door. You will step forward to the new door and you will move in the new door and you will execute the plans within the marketplace. But then he says, we're going to take it to another level. You're not just going to begin to go into the marketplace in the mountain, but you're going to begin to go into the mountain of family. And he says, daughter, it's a season of possessing and, 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 and declaring. And I'm going to give you a fresh vision in this next season that you're stepping into, says the Lord. And so the Lord says, daughter, you've passed the test and you have overcome. And he says, no, that I have put my grace upon you in a mighty way, says the Lord. So Lord, I loose this word upon me. And I call her forth, I call forth a fresh surge ahead that's lighting her pathway. And I call it forth right now. And I charge her in the Holy Ghost. And I call it forth right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It's right there. I'm literally seeing the door in me. I'm literally seeing the fresh door that is coming open for you in a massive way. Massive, 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 massive door. Massive door. Massive door. Right there. There it is. Right there. Yes, I, I literally see it. It's like it's like moving. Like, yes, I, it's been a rocky. It's been overwhelming. I'm like, you have thrown your hands up in the air. The baby is going to be fine. The baby is going to be fine, daughter. The baby is going to be fine. The enemy has tried to take out the promised child. That baby was prophesied. That baby was prophesied. And the enemy is trying to counteract that. But I come against the plan of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare that he's going to be healthy. He's going to sense and see. And he's going to be a leader in his generation. And I call that forth right now in Jesus' name. And the days that you feel overwhelmed, you will stand on this word. And this word will be your healing agent to say, I've got you. You're walking through this next season and you're overcoming in a greater way, says the Lord of hosts. Wow. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Jennifer, 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 Don Donnelly. Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer, man. Ah, guys, get prepared, Jennifer. Wow. I've never met you, but I hear the Lord say, I just see prayer really ascending upon you right now. You're just in a, now here, here's what I want to tell you. I'm literally seeing it. He says, I'm just ascending on you, descending on you, excuse you, excuse me, descending on you, uh, this prayer mountain. And it's a season of it. It's a season of it. And what I see the Lord doing with you right now 
is that he's asking you to pray uh, and prepare um, for um, 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 this movement. Um, and I literally see you, sweet, sweet lady, sitting in a chair. I'm, I get a lot of mental pictures on prophesy. I see you sitting in a chair, but I see Esther opening up. And I see Esther is going to come alive to you so much that it's going to make you come into a place of weeping. And that place of weeping is that you're going to feel what Esther felt. And it's going to, you're going to feel, who man, I feel this thing all day long. I feel like I just want to run in my office right now. I literally see you're going to get such an overwhelmingness of Esther that you're actually going to feel what Esther is going to feel. And you're actually going to see what Esther is going to feel. <laughs> and I had the Lord say, get prepared because you can ready to set the Esther's free in within the spheres of your influence. And the Lord says, daughter, I'm going to use you to be an Esther releaser, an Esther releaser. And you're going to set the Esther's free and you're going to release the Esther's and you're going to help Esther's find their purpose and their identity, says the Lord. And then the Lord says that you'll be one that will grab the Esthers that I bring towards you and you'll bring them with you into Washington, D.C. Oh, there's a sound that's coming from your neighborhood. There's a sound that's coming from your city. There's a sound that's coming, says the Lord. And Jennifer, the Lord says, don't worry because I'll bring the finances in. I'll bring the family to alignment. I'll bring everything in, but I'm putting you on assignment today. You're stepping into a ministry of an Esther right now. You're stepping into a ministry of hearing the word of the Lord because I've called you to be a Esther releaser. And I prophesy to every single woman on here right now that you are an Esther releaser. Come on, lift your hands right where you are. Lift your hands right where you are. I release right now and I prophesy right now with a greater anointing, an Esther release, an Esther release, an Esther release. I see a charge. I charge you right now and I charge you right now. There's an Esther release and you're going to dream. You're going to get a vision. You're going to get a passion. You're going to anointing and you're going to bring Esther's. There's an Esther release. There's an Esther release. Oh, you! if you're not convinced now, Esther, you are a releaser. And I'm telling you, you're going to release. And I hear the Lord say that prayer hubs are going to triple. They're going to triple. They're going to triple. They're going to triple. I prophesy tripling of prayer hubs, tripling of prayer hubs, tripling. I see business owners having prayer hubs in their businesses. I see business owners having prayer. I see schools having prayer hubs. I see it right now. And I prophesy right now. I'm seeing it right now. I'm seeing prayer hubs are emerging. Prayer hubs are setting up. We're going to have so many prayer hubs that we can even contain the prayer hubs. I'm telling you, prayer hubs are going to be nationwide. All 50 states will have prayer hubs. And not just one prayer hub, but they're going to be multiple. I prophesy a multiplication of prayer hubs. I heard the Lord say, I'm getting, I see the word 350,000 prayer hubs. 350,000 prayer hubs. 300, I prophesy 350,000 prayer hubs right now. I prophesy right now. I'm prophesying right now. 350,000 prayer hubs. Let it be known in the heavens. Let it be known on the earth right now. 350,000 prayer hubs are going to be birthed. I'm telling you right now. And I'm telling it, and it's going to be with unity, units, with unity. And it's going to be one accord. And I'm telling you, it's not going to be about a name. It's not going to be about, it's going to be on one accord. I heard the Lord say, this movement is going to be bathed in prayer. And it's going to come through the vehicle of the prayer hubs. Watch what I'm saying. Watch 350,000. I, I sense, I know that we talked, I, I, I'm not really much in about, you know, Christine Baker has it, but 250. But I kept hearing the Lord say 350,000, 350,000. God says, I'm, I'm the God. You place that number, but I'm giving you a new number because I'm releasing the Esther's, the re Esther releasers. I, I, I see a shirt that says Esther releaser, <laughs> Esther releaser. Come on. I don't know if there's been a word like that before, but I'm prophesying that in right now. Esther release, Esther release. And I'm prophesying that right now. Your husbands will be Mordecai releasers. Your husbands will be Mordecai releasers. And we need the Mordecais to come forth. 
We need the Mordecai to come forth. All tribes, all ethnic groups, all coming from. And right now, I prophesy right now, Mordecai releases right now in the name of Jesus. I prophesy right now from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Oh, I feel the angels rumbling. Angels are on assignment. And we're about to see a billion, a billion so harvest that's coming. I'm telling you, it's there. Come on, receive it. You got to receive this thing. Nothing is done without receiving by faith. Nothing is done without receiving by faith. I'm telling you, you're moving past yesterday's anointing and you're stepping into a kingdom anointing. You're moving past yesterday's anointing. You're moving to the kingdom anointing. And I'm telling you, there's an Esther and a Mordecai release that's taking place right now. Oh, Mama Jenny, I feel it right now. There's a release. I hear the Lord say, I can't get off of it. And the Lord says, I see a door opening up and I see a million of Esther's been released. And I see millions of Mordecai has been released and I'm seeing the two are emerging together and it's the greatest eruption that's taken place and all that the Delta factors rise up as Louis Engel prophesied. I stand on that word and I call it forth in the name of Jesus I prophesy that right now let it be known from this voice as a prophet to the nation an apostle to the nation I'm telling you that there is a releasing of an Esther and there's a releasing of a Mordecai and there's a mighty release that's taking place and I'm telling you, it is going to be with power, it is going to be with great joy, and it's going to be great victory and children will hear the releasing of the Esther and the Mordecai the young daughters will be Esther releases and the young boys will be Mordecai releases and there's going to be a mighty surge that is taking place in this time and season and I'm telling you, prayer is about to get back in alignment, if you're not praying and you don't have a praying family. Let me tell you, get your family praying. And I'm going to tell you this as a pastor. I don't know where we got this idea, this thought process that pastors have to, you have to have communion in church service. I don't know where we get that theology at, but I'm telling you, you should be doing communion every day in your home. Do you understand what I'm saying? And if you don't have, go on Amazon, get you some communion, get you some communion and take communion every day. I challenge you. I challenge you, Esther releasers and Mordecai releasers, I'm telling you right now, you go get you some uh, some some communion and you take communion all the way until we get to Washington, D.C. And man, I'm telling you, it's going to be the greatest revival. It's going to be the greatest thing that's ever been heard. So, Lord, I loose this word now. I thank you for what you are doing in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, it's going to it's going to be happening. It's going to be so good. Hey, that's incredible. I love you so much. I didn't get excited. And uh, um, hey, we're doing a massive conference. I know my mom is going to talk about it, but let me just tell you. I want, to I want you to do. Okay. Go for it. I'm about it. We're doing a massive conference. I'm going to hear, hear me clearly, please. We're doing a conference in Portland. We do it every year. But I'm more convinced this conference right now called City Awakening Revival is Now. I've had multiple confirmations. I literally, uh, we was in, me and Jenny were in Detroit and the back of their shirt just said, revival is now. And the Lord says, do you see it? I'm more convinced right now that revival is now. It's not something in the past. It's not something that, it's right now. We're in revival. I want to invite you to jump on a plane to get to Portland, October 19th through the 21st. And, and get to this conference. It is going to be absolutely amazing. Jenny Down is going to be there. I'm going to be there. We got some other great voices going to be there. Our prophetic teams, people that I've literally trained to prophesy, raise up to prophesy. They're going to be there. One of our pastors, Pastor Sherry Petzel, she leads our prophetic teams. You do not want to miss it. You can get the tickets right now uh, at cityawakeningpdx.com, cityawakeningpdx.com. The early bird special is right now. It's very cheap. We're going to be at the collective church. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And I promise you, you do not want to miss this exciting conference, cityawakeningpdx.com. I think my mom is going to put it on the screen. Someone's going to put it on the screen. But I'm telling you, it's going to be incredible. You can look at uh, all our Instagram. You can look at all that. It's going to be incredible. Help us. Because here's what I know. I'm going to, I'm stepping out a little bit more. The Lord said this revi- this conference is, I, I literally, every time I see the word revival, it's what the scripture says in Jeremiah. 
it is like fire shut up in my bones. And I began to research that. And the Lord says, Jeremiah couldn't contain what he was feeling inside. So he said that word. It's like fire set up. I, he's like, he, he had to leap with the fire of God. And I heard the Lord say, there's a leaping that's coming forth in this generation. We were in Washington, D.C. It was, man, I, you guys, let me just tell y'all something. She ain't going to tell you, but I'm going to tell you because I'm a son. I can tell you. So I'm going to tell you. I've been knowing for a long time. Let me tell you. There should have been more of y'all in that in Washington, D.C. this time around. Because I tell you what, when we had when we started worshiping, do you not understand? There were some pivotal things prophetically. See, as a prophet, you get these you can see pivotal things. Number one, there was a sound that came out of that park that it made people stop. That's number one. Literally, people stopped. Number two. There was such a clarity of the message that people were drawn in to say, what is going on? Number three, mm -hmm. right across the street, the motorcade was coming. Now, there's two people that, several people that say that, that Joe Biden was there. He was coming out of the motorcade, but it was really, it was the president from Russia that was coming out of it. Think about it. We're in a park talking about turning our nation back to God. And there's a motorcade that comes at the pivotal mm -hmm. time where we're worshiping. Matter of fact, it was so good. Callie spilled a little bit of her communion. Some of we're poor communion. No, matter of fact, we spilled, we poured communion on the ground right when mm -hmm. the motorcade was starting to come. What is that significance? It was saying that this land doesn't belong to a man that has that sits in the house. It belongs to the Lord because we, this, this nation, the word, Hebrews 11 says, the, the word, the Lord created the, the world with his words and that we are standing on a blood-bought land. You all should have been there. Now you're going to get another chance maybe to come back again. When we make a good ploy, you better jump on a plan to get there. See, we can have a party. We call it the pre-party. You can have a party before the party. You understand what I'm saying? Because we had a party. We had a party. Now, we had some filming days, but, you know, give it that. <laughs> we, we had to make take care of business, um, but we take care of business. But I'm going to tell you, I'm more proud of this incredible lady right here. than I'm, I'm always proud of her. She has some of the most greatest faith ever that, that like, uh, like she will, she has faith. But this right here, I even had to say to myself, Lord, Ooh, we maybe I missed this one, Lord. I think I missed this one. Maybe man, come on, Jan. We don't have to do this. Let's just tell the Lord we ain't got to do this. This is like, ooh, we I don't know about this one. I think we done messed up now. And I got on the plane, so I was like, Lord, let me think about it. Did we really say that? I said, No. And I said, The Lord said, I said it. And if, if God said it, I believe it. That settles it. I'm settled in this. I'm super excited for what's about to happen. Esther releasers and Mordecai releasers. And I'm believing, please understand me, we need 350,000 prayer hubs. Mm -hmm. We need, we need, we are ploying 350,000 prayer hubs. A family that prays together stays together. We That's need right. family to stay together. I don't care if you're single, you're part of a family. Identity grows in community. We need a community. We need you in the front. And then on top of that, pray for those that are organizing and putting this stuff together because it's a lot of work. We need a lot of prayer. We need intercession. She needs intercession. We need intercession. Because I'm telling you, I think whoever president is in, stay in, in there, it may be old Biden, whoever, he's going to look out the window like, what is going on out there? What is going on? Brother, we praying for you. <laughs> we praying for our city nations. Let me say this last thing, and I thank you, Holy Spirit. I heard the Lord say just now, just a quicken in my spirit. I don't know who's on here, but I heard the Lord say, some of you, I see about five of you. The Lord is calling you to a higher level of government. And I heard the Lord, I'm literally seeing a hat. I'm literally seeing a hat. And the Lord says, put your name in the hat. Put your name in the hat. 
And, and I'm mm-hmm. saying this because w- these guys left early, but we had the greatest privilege of going to one of the representative. I can't remember the guy's name. I know he wears a patch. He's out of Houston or Texas. He's a representative. We actually got a tour and we went to his office, his office with the staff. And his, and his chief of staff gave us a tour. And I prophesied over that chief of staff. And I prophesied along with uh, Rita and John Fashwal and all those guys that were with us. We prophesied into the office. And the Lord says, I want you to tell him to put his name in the hat because I'm going to use him in a mighty way. And I'm telling you right now, I, I prophesy. There's, some of you are supposed to be on school boards. Some of you are supposed to be in local government. Some of you are supposed to be mayors in your own city. I prophesy right now, it's time for you to move out of fear and move into the glory zone. And God will take care of you. I love you. God bless you. Come on. Come on. That was so incredible. Man, I am completely fired up. (laughs) Okay, Pastor Claude, I got to share something with you. That $350,000 means more than you know because... um, we put out a post the other day, um, I think it was yesterday maybe, about Paw Patrol. So <laughs> Paw Patrol, anybody that has little kids, grandkids, okay? Paw Patrol. Do you know about it? Yes. No, I don't know about it, but I know, but I know you know, Jalen and mine, they used to watch Paw Patrol, and I'm like, that, so when you okay. say Paw Patrol, it's like the cartoon. <laughs> I know, it's the cartoon. Well, it used to be one of the kind of last standing safe cartoons, but- Um, they, they have a new writer and the writer, she is, um, a, a transgender, you know, in the mountain of, um, entertainment. And she has a YouTube channel called queer kid stuff. And you can go look at it. I looked at it and, um, it's like puppet show. It's, um, the episode I saw was a little boy that's 11 and he's a drag queen. He has his lashes on and the whole bit. Um, she writes books, teaching kids about abortion and, you know, like this is when mommies don't have time to have, to be mommies. They don't, it doesn't work with their life and it's, um, horrific, but she's the new writer for Paw Patrol. So I was looking up how many households Paw Patrol is in. And this is what I want you to know. 350 million households. Oh my word. And I heard that and I said, God, we, we've got to do better. We can't just have 250,000 prayer hubs. Right now we have 2,100. And I'm thinking, how can we get a prayer hub in as many households as Paw Patrol or at least a drop? So I just did the math. 350,000 prayer hubs, okay, is 0.01%. Wow. We'd be hitting 0.01% of Paw Patrol, which means it's only the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And a, a prayer hub for people that, you know, it's, it, it's weird as Christians, we look at prayer as a job like, okay, I guess I'll pray. You know, I guess I'll talk to the King of the universe and see him do miracles in my life. Like there's, there's a disconnect sometimes. And what we have to understand is that a prayer hub with your child, because Paw Patrol, they have, they have the trans dog now. They've already written that in. It's already happening. Um, But it's two to five years old from two to five years old. It's preschoolers. So that what they can normalize, they can normalize this. All right. So what we have to do is stop catching people at 32, 38 years old when their marriage is falling apart and then saying, okay, let me teach you how to pray. Because the reason things are falling apart is because people haven't learned how to pray. My point is this, we've got to get on offense. It's not just about defending our kids. It's not just protect our kids. And it is don't mess with our kids. But what if we took an offensive approach and said, come hell or high water, I'm having a prayer hub with my own children that live in my house. And you know what you do, ladies? It's really easy. Grandmothers, you print out the prayer, the 30 prayer points. You don't have to read all 30 of them. But you give them the color sheets. We load up five color sheets every single month. This is all free. This is all free. You get these color sheets out, print them on your printer, put them down with some crayons, with some markers. What kid doesn't love that? You read the line and you say, hey, when Mima's done reading this line, 
you say amen, okay? Because we're going to pray. We're going to see God move in our nation. And we're going to see God do miracles in our home. And we're going to see God do amazing things. Because when we talk to God, God listens. See, that's what a two-year-old needs to know. That's what a three-year-old needs to know. And then they're, they're coloring and you say, okay, say amen. And they say, amen. See, this doesn't need to be some elite thing. Prayer is not for elite Christians. It is the foundation of our Christianity. Washington, D.C., for me, is a place where we can all gather, but then explode prayer hubs all over the nation. And here's the crazy part. Because they're free. Now, they're not free for us. We have to pay people to put these together and do the coloring sheets and put it on the app and do the admin and all that. Like the gospel is free, but the pipeline isn't. That's right. So thank you for those who become partners. Thank you for those who, who become partners with us because you're allowing this to happen. But one way that you can steward what's happening in our nation is to tell every mother you know, get a prayer hub with your kids. There are after school Satan clubs. People didn't even believe me. I put it on social media and they were like, how do you know this is true? And I'm like, look it up, go look it up. There are Satan after school clubs and they put them in the schools. And you know what? It's easy to complain. That's not hard. It takes no, no faith to complain. It, it takes no faith for me to even tell you that right now. You know what it takes? A little bit of diligence, a little bit of like, I'm going to do something about this. Put it on the calendar, get it on the calendar once a month. You know what? I and 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 Lou Engle, you know, he's like, once a month isn't enough. And I'm like, I agree. But I'm trying to get people to start somewhere. Start somewhere. And so we're saying once a month. And you know what? If you get once a week in Korea, they pray for hours every morning, starting at 4 a.m. So guys, we've got to step up our game. We we gotta step this thing up. We got we gotta pray. We gotta teach our children to pray. Don't just put them in Sunday school and hope that they get a prayer life. They, they know what to do in Jesus because of what they've seen and what they've experienced with their parents. Let me, let me tell right? you this. Mom, you can do this. Let, let me tell you this. I, I, I'm, I'm a product of discipleship by a guy named CJ Coffey. I'm forever grateful. There's times that, that I weep and I call him weeping because I'm so grateful. But one of the things I value so much is that they taught us, taught me when I was young at an early age to get up at four o'clock in the morning and pray. I have the prayer life the way that uh, my prayer life is the way that it is today is because they taught us when I was in a freshman, an eighth grader in a freshman in high school, all the way up until I got married about prayer, my prayer life. The Lord said this to me this morning. God speaks to these who take time to listen and he listens to these who take time to pray. Who take time to pray. So, you know. My prayer, my, my massive prayer is that you get out of your way and you step into the prayer life. Everybody wants the, everybody wants the prophetic, they want giftings, they want all this stuff. But you know what? What really changes a lot of things is my prayer life. I, I want intimacy with him. You can be enamored with the crowd and the giftings. That didn't do anything for you. Be enamored, be enamored with the power of the Holy Spirit within you by spending time praying. Come on. See, we shouldn't have to beg you to come into a place of prayer and to pray for our nation. Our foundation is who we are as believers to pray. I love spending time. Do you know there's times I shut my office down and I shut everything down and I just meditate I turn on my worship music, my prophetic soaking albums. I just meditate. I love praying. Even before I jumped on there today, I, I, feel, I spent time praying, God, what do you want me to know? What do you want me to do? God, give me something for these amazing, incredible le releases of Esther's and Mordecai's. You've got to pray. It's, it, it hurts my heart to hear people say, beg, plead to pray. The Muslim, the Muslim, let me tell you. I'm, we're on, I'm on planes a lot. Muslims, I see them, they're in airports, they will pull out their carpet and they will sit right there, they can care less and start praying. We get so fearful about, oh, we can't pray. Oh, people, what are people gonna think? Literally, like we were in the open and cross street from the White House and we were worshiping, praising Jesus. And you want some of this? Come on over. You, we can give you some. So I, I, but what I heard the Lord say, and she will tell you, she will literally tell you, I haven't prophesied. 
about 350 or even the prayer hubs. What I heard the Lord say today, this afternoon, at this moment, 350 prayer hubs, the Lord says, that's really nothing. But actually, I want all people to pray. Mm -hmm. I really sense in 2024, right now, prayer and fasting is about to hit the nation, the church, the ecclesia. To the fact that I'm getting ready to do, I'm going to be doing a prayer conference. That's how this thing is in me. I love prayer. See, but they don't know. See, y'all coming on the end. See, man, Jenny and, and the rest of us, boy, we'd be, there's times that we'd be praying and worshiping for for hours. I mean, for hours. We'd be in there. I mean, we'll shut apart. I mean, we, we <laughs> I can't say we shut a bar down, but we will shut things down. Because we used to be praying that long on worshiping. And we was like, I can't hang with y'all. Y'all go too long. Because we, we, we've, been, we've been marked in the presence of God. We've been marked in the presence of God. So I'm here pleading with you, mm -hmm. encouraging you to go and start a prayer hub. Ministries, if you're a ministry Praise God, your ministry. Let's start a prayer hub. I'm thinking of ways that we're going to do prayer hubs. I'm thinking of ways that we go start a prayer hub. Be with it. Encourage. Encourage your children. Now, she didn't ask me this, but I'm telling you, I've been, I've seen it. I'm seeing what's happened. going to happen in Washington, D.C. Prayer changes things. A movement is a movement, but prayer behind the movement fuels the fire and revival. Right. Sustains us in battle. That's right. That's you know, right. Yeah. We right. yeah, we don't want to get all the way to Washington, D.C. and see something great happen for a moment and then go back to the way that we are living. Prayer right. needs to come to the center of the table once again with the blood of Jesus, mm -hmm. communion, you know, all this. Hey, listen, mm -hmm. I'm going to share this because it comes in perfectly right now. Please stay on here. We just have a couple of minutes left. If you can hang for just a minute. Let me put this up here. This was in my spirit and it was strong. I've been praying about this. I've been thinking about this. I've been, I got my, my, you know, napkin, my notes out. I'm, I'm doing something here. And this is going to be a one year Esther immersion. And the Lord downloaded this to me about five weeks ago. I called Christy Johnston. I said, what do you think about this? I'm seeing a one year preparation. And she said, I love it. Absolutely. I called Lisa Bevere. I said, Lisa, help me think through this. What do you think about this? And these women are getting excited about it. It is going to be one year. Now, listen, this is what the Lord told me. November 6th, that's a Monday. And we're going to go through one whole year ending November 5th. We would have, God willing, already been to the mall. But guess what November 5th is? Does anybody know? It's election day. 2024. And the Lord said, do you really want to leave this year to chance? Do you really want to leave this year to chance? That's what I felt in my spirit. And then he said this, find the 10%. I want my first installment of my million. That's what I heard the Lord say, the first installment, 10% of the million. And I, I heard 100,000 women, 100,000 women who would go into a one-year Esther immersion. And what we're going to do is we're going to have basically guided prayer to teach people, hear, hear me, teach people how to pray. Yes. We're in the decade of the pay. On the Hebrew calendar, the decade of the pay, the decade of using your mouth, that came out in 2020 was the first year of the decade of the pay. Oh, really? That's so interesting because that's when we all had to cover our pay, to cover our mouth. The enemy does not want you praying. That's right. The first right. letter of pray in the Hebrew word pray is pay. It's the mouth. And so I saw these audios. We're going to give these audios Monday through Saturday. In these audios, you're going to be able to hear the word of the Lord, and then begin with your own mouth to begin to pray over your family. You're going to be guided through prayer. And I heard that God would give us a walk and talk Monday through Friday, walk and talk with Jesus. 
I want you to think about the treadmill you're going to step on. I want you to, some of you live in places you can walk all year. I can't do that unless I have a raincoat and an umbrella and all the bit, you know, but I'm going to get on a treadmill and I'm going to walk and pray and I'm going to pray. I'm going to use my pay. I'm going to use my mouth and I'm going to pray. And there'll be several women of God that come on on audio and they'll begin to pray. Now, here's the thing. The Lord told me to do this. I've never done this. But when I was talking to Lisa Bevere, she said it before I told her what was in me. And I was like, there it is. She just said it. All women sew $9.99 a month into this. $9.99 a month. That is a foofy drink at Starbucks. Okay. $9.99 a month for 12 months. This is sowing a seed. Because if we don't put any skin in the game, I mean, everything we do is free. This is free. Come to Angela's Temple in LA. That's free. Come to the Oregon Convention Center. That's free. We're going to be in Naples, Florida. That's free. We went to Washington, D.C. That was, I mean, it's free zone right now. But the Lord said that in order to produce a harvest, a personal harvest, your personal harvest, and a national harvest for these 100,000 women, are you one of the first installment? Are you the down payment? of the million women, they're going to change the country. Because if you are, I want you in this thing. $9.99 a month. I'm thinking that's actually pretty cheap. <laughs> but you're not paying for a service. You're sowing. You're pointing your seed into the ground to see a national revival, to see a reformation, to see your children and your grandchildren inherit a nation that is strong again, that is saying, no, we're not doing all the transgender stuff. No, we're not going to do all that curriculum in our schools. Did you know that the organ right now, the organ, um, the first draft for the curriculum has stuff. My, one of my daughters is sitting right here. So I can't even say the words that they want. She's nine. She'll be nine in a couple months. What they want her to know at nine years old, I won't even say the words with her in this room right now. And they want to teach her that. This is ridiculous. It has gone too far. So this is what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to be part of every free thing, free podcast, free word on Wednesday, free Monday vision zoom, free in LA, free in Naples, free in Houston at crown in, in January. I mean, it's just free all over the place, but would you sew? And some of you are going to sell more than nine 99 a month. You're going to say, you know what? God's asking me to sew a hundred dollars a month on this thing. For some of you, you can sew $500 a month. For some of you, you can sew $20 a month. And then I'm going to ask every woman, Pastor Clyde, yeah. I'm going to ask everyone, because I saw this in St. Louis. And I said, Lord, are you sure? Like, you know, you hear something and then you're like, are you sure, God? He said, a third of Washington, D.C., how much it's going to cost to go there, which, by the way, only the event itself, no administration leading up to it, nothing, nothing around the day is $15 million. $15 million. And he wants a third of that to be funded by Gen Z and Alpha. He said that when we go live with this thing, that there would be Gen Z and Alpha that would go to the gym, they'll get their AirPods on, they'll begin to pray, or they'll just be a part of this. And they would also do a subscription for $9.99. And we need to recruit them. So I'm asking every woman that gets in this to recruit one person that is a generation younger than them might be a millennial might be a gen z might be you know if you're a baby boomer it could be a gen x i'm a gen x but a younger person because it can't just be about me it has it needs to be about who can i who can i cover in the next generation i am a covering you are a covering for the next generation and so i'm telling you i see this larger than life if you are seeing yourself a part of this just put an emoji down here start telling your friends, I do not have a place for you to sign up right now. It's literally just me mm -hmm. saying it's coming and we're going to have to get people signed up during the month of October. So we're going to start um, executing this right away and you'll be able to come in. There'll be special content. We're going to have um, Daniel fasting content. We're going to have um, around the dinner table with your family content. We're going to bring discussions that you can have conversations around the dinner table with your family because we've got to talk about this. When Paw Patrol lost their mind, I pulled my six and or my seven now, seven and eight year old daughter. And I said, guess what? This is what happened on Paw Patrol. And they're like, wow, okay. And they know, but we talk about it. 
We don't just turn the TV off. No, we talk about it. You know why? Because I want them to understand what the enemy's up to. We talk about two girls together. Can that make a baby? It can't make a baby. Two boys together can't make a baby because you know what? The devil doesn't like babies. The devil doesn't like life. So do you see what's going on here? And we teach them and we train them so they are not vulnerable to the enemy. Okay. So we've gone longer than we normally go on word on Wednesday, but you know, who cares? You're in control of your time when you can get on and off here. But I just know that the Lord is super serious about this. I am calling for a hundred thousand women and I need you to help me. I need you to right now make a list of 10 women, you know, that need to be part of the hundred thousand. They're the women that are like, I'm not going to let this thing go down on my watch. I'm not going to sit on the sidelines. If you know women that are not sideline women, but they're like, I don't know what to do, but I'm in. Like, tell me what to do. Just give me my marching orders. Get those women notified immediately, immediately about this movement. It is going to start November 6th. I want to call Friday a fast. I will be water fasting from 6 p.m. on Thursday to 6 p.m. on Friday. When you have to. It might be you skip lunch on Friday. You skip breakfast on Friday. You know, it might be that you just Daniel fast on Friday. You don't need to eat any sugar on Friday. I don't know. But this is the Friday fast. Maybe it's you'll, you won't complain on Fridays. You know, maybe you're going to fast from negativity. I don't know. But the point here is that we're going to do something together and we need to because this year is the hinge year. It's 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 this year. Woo! Which way are we going to go? Which way is the nation going to go? And I believe we need to jump on the side of righteousness and pull the scales on the side of righteousness and get a hundred thousand women jumping on the scales of justice and jumping on the scales of mercy. We want to see a merciful God save a hundred thousand LGBTQ, but we also want justice done and justice served to the vulnerable and to the children. Okay. So if you're with me, just type amen, type I'm in, type whatever, and um, start recruiting. That's what I need you to do. I need you to start recruiting. Yeah. Amen. I love that. Think, I, love that. I, I love, love that. And then, and then people who have this theology of, you know, the, the, the remember everything comes out of a source of fear and, and fear, confrontation of fear. And, 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 and people will say, well, you know, charge and all that at the end of the day, it's amazing how we would go after everybody else uh, about the church charging but you will pay for something else. Here, here's what I do know. I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for someone sowing the gospel in at, through missions and through ministry to get to where I am today. So step into that, what they're doing. It's going to be a blessing. I'm telling you, that's super, super amazing. Do not let fear and confrontation, everything starts out do not let that stop you from doing this. Step in it, trust God, and I promise you, your best days are ahead of you. Amen. Hey, love you guys. Um, stay close to the Lord. He will tell you exactly what to do in life. He doesn't leave you high and dry. I just felt to say that really quick. You know, um, there's a beautiful scripture. I can't remember the reference, but he says that there's a voice behind you that says, this is the way walk in it. And a stranger's voice, I do not know. But I know the voice of the Lord. Okay, he is so faithful. He will not leave you astray. Don't do all your living from your head. When I heard 100,000 women, I wanted to say how. When I heard a million women, I wanted to say how. My head wants to say how. But you know what my spirit says? My spirit says go. This says how, spirit says go. So we're going to go and we're going to do big things with God. And he's going to get all the credit, trust me. All the glory belongs to him. All right, we love you. Hey, Pastor Clyde, thank you for being here today. I cannot wait for City Awakening. Cityawakeningpdx.com. Get your registration. Get your ticket. Come and get your life totally changed. I can't wait for it. It's coming up real soon. All right, you guys, take care. God bless you, and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.